many are concerned uh, about whether by signing the agreement, the opposition have lost their voice. Uh, that would be a misunderstanding of what has been signed uh, because what was signed essentially is an agreement to jointly approve or jointly pass uh, these uh, uh, new reforms as well as to approve a new expenditure, a critical expenditure to fight the COVID-19 as well as to rescue businesses that are much in need of assistance uh, today. There's nothing in the agreement that says that we cannot scold the Prime Minister or we cannot scold any underperforming ministers or we cannot uh, criticise uh, one of the ministers who says something stupid uh, like they did before. So, so we are still the opposition uh, uh, just like before except that we have, succeed, we have succeeded now to persuade the government to jointly uh, uh, carry out reforms in the interest of the people. A lot of it has got to be scepticism with regards to whether Ismail Sabri administration will actually fulfill the promises in the MOU. Uh, we will see. We will see very soon within these two terms, by before the end of the year, some of the agreements, uh, some of the reforms are supposed to be implemented almost immediately. Uh, and we will see that they, they are implemented according to the agreed schedule. We even put in place a schedule. So these are not just promises that may be delivered sometime in the future. These are promises with a timeline attached to them. So the people can witness for themselves if they deliver this. And for, for the opposition, there's actually no loss in the event Okay, that the government fails to fulfill their promise. They say we agreed to do the anti-hopping law by uh, early next year. Say lah, huh? early next year. I can't remember the exact timeline, but say early next year. And they failed to do it. Okay, Then it is a breach of the MOU and the MOU lapse. The opposition doesn't lose anything. Okay, But the credibility of the government of the day, the credibility of Ismail Sabri, will be severely damaged because he agreed to do it and then he U-turned. The way I will compare is compare against if we don't sign the MOU. Okay, so if the MOU gets breached compared to if we didn't sign the MOU, are we worse off? We are not worse off. But if the MOU gets signed and the government fulfills the terms in the MOU by passing all these reforms and the, 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 the requests uh, that we have put in place, then the rakyat benefits, the we benefit, and the Malaysian democracy benefits. So it's a no-brainer for us because there's nothing for us to lose. We continue to be an opposition. We continue to protest against uh, unfair actions by the government or incompetent actions by the government. It's only in the bills that the government wants to pass, they actually have to consult with us. And if they do and incorporate our views, then we... Uh, on our part, would then have an obligation not to object to these bills. The important thing now is the uh, liaison committee, the committee that's being formed to monitor the development of the, the progress of this. Uh, and the committee has a very big role to make sure that all the reforms and requests that we want gets implemented in a timely fashion so that the people can judge if this MOU uh, will work.